It's time for the Taco Truck Roundup. What's up, everybody? I am Dave Swift from ClientAmp.com, and this video is a roundup, a summary of all of my recent deal reviews. I put out six videos in about the last week. Each one of them is at least 30 minutes in length or so, so you're looking at a solid three hours of entertainment, education, whatever you want to classify this under. So the point of this video is to make it more digestible so you can figure out what you're actually even interested in. I'm gonna blast through all six tools I've recently reviewed, give you a very quick synopsis so you can just decide if you even want to go deeper. If you do, check out those folding videos. They'll make you a master at that particular application. I leave no stone unturned. We go into every single button and menu item. So if you have a question, it's probably answered in one of those videos. All right, without further ado, let's get into our first tool of the week, which is Layer Path. All right, Layer Path was one that I even said in the video, I did not expect to like as much as I ended up liking. This is a product tour type of video. Now, everybody's signed up for some software and you get one of those little tool tips that makes you go step by step through the application and shows you how it works. Well, you can do that sort of thing inside of Layer Path. It makes three different types of content. It does tours, which is what I just talked about, where you can kind of go step by step through some screenshots and, and see how something works. You can also do guides, which I really liked the guide interface. That was probably my favorite uh, because I felt like it was kind of fresh and new. I hadn't really seen an interface like that before, particularly for like a help doc. That's just, I really enjoyed it. I would list the steps out on the side and you can very quickly skip to the different steps with that table of contents off to the side. And then finally, it also did videos, which are kind of similar to like Screen Studio or another tool I reviewed called Focusy. But those videos are very similar. The main difference with something like Layer Path is that it's not gonna record your webcam. You can't even record your voice at any point into Layer Path, but that doesn't mean there can't be narration. In fact, one of the most impressive things about Layer Path was that it would do AI generation of the step-by-step -step directions, and then it could even on top of that add AI narration. So if you're creating content for maybe something outside of your language, or even if you just don't like the sound of your voice on the microphone, this tool might be the perfect solution to help you serve your clients, to help get the message across about how to use your application. By the way, you don't have to be a web developer. You could just help people out with their websites and you wanna create guides for them. Layer Path is definitely something worth checking out. We've got a full length video going into every single nook and cranny. I gave Layer Path an 8.6, very impressed with this tool. So definitely check it out if this at all interests you. Next up is a tool called FocuC or FocusE, depending on how you'd like to pronounce it. I called it FocusE in my video, so I'm gonna continue that way. This is a desktop application. It runs on both Windows and Mac, and its main goal is to record your screen but it does so with a nice little enhancement. It will automatically apply zooms and you can also swap out your mouse, just making your screen recordings look beautiful and cinematic. There's a nice motion blur effect that's automatically applied and it really makes the animations look you know, nice and smooth, more, more smooth than a human would ever actually use a computer. Now, these are great for short product demos. You can also record your webcam and use a voiceover. So it's a full-fledged recorder. And at the end, if you wanna share the recording, you can click a little button and upload the video to their cloud. And very much like Loom, you have a link that you can share with anyone. Now, this is all the positives of FocusC. I have not mentioned its main competitor, which is called Screen Studio. Screen Studio is a tool that I made a video about maybe about a year ago that is really, really advanced. They are constantly adding very nice features to it. And I think FocusC is trying to catch up to Screen Studio. Screen Studio also available for a one-time payment, but it doesn't include lifetime updates. So it's not really in the same class as FocusC. And it, the other thing is that Screen Studio only runs on Mac. So if you have Windows, you're gonna be looking towards FocusC and just by default. So that is what I think of FocusC. It's not my favorite tool in the category, but given the financial or maybe platform restrictions, it's definitely worth checking out. In my video, I gave FocusC a 6.8. If you're interested in learning more, the link for that video is down below, or just go ahead and grab it on AppSumo. I'll have a link for that as well. It's the best way to support my content is to use my AppSumo links. Very much appreciated. Next up is MyMeet. MyMeet is a online meeting tool allowing you to create a booking page and have people schedule appointments with you. I did a full length deep dive into MyMeet 
desperately trying to get it set up and working, but no matter what I did, my booking page was always marked as unavailable. Now, I was able to get this resolved after contacting their support. It definitely was on their end, not on mine. They flipped some switch, and then all of a sudden my account was working, but unfortunately I'd already recorded my video at that time. There were several other little glitches or maybe just things that were unclear that I felt like should have been more clear throughout the tool, like trying to update my avatar was a colossal failure. I tried to do it three or four times, and it turns out there was like some field in my profile that needed to be completed before I could update the avatar. But it, even though it was on the screen, I probably should have noticed it. I was focused on that avatar and I didn't notice that they wanted me to fill something in. It's not a, a something I've ever encountered when adding a profile photo to any other tool. Now you might think I'm focusing on this one little glitch too much, but I'm a big belief that how you do one thing is how you do everything. So having those little errors and those little idiosyncrasies deep inside of the tool just shows me that there's gonna be probably more problems with this tool down the line. So I didn't end up giving this one a final score. However, you know, I definitely recommend trying it out for yourself and seeing if you have a better experience than I did. Just my first go was definitely less than optimal. So my advice right now is probably to pick up TidyCal over something like MyMeets. I, I would just recommend relying on Zoom. It's something that everyone knows, like it's become the Kleenex brand of online meetings. So to do a meeting any place other than Zoom, it could be okay. But uh, for the most part, clients want to meet on Zoom. It's what they know, it's what they have installed, and it's what they're comfortable with. So that's what I'm doing for the foreseeable future. It is nice that MyMeet has their own interface for those one-on-one -on -one meetings. But uh, yeah, I'm a Zoom guy, I think. If anyone at Zoom wants to sponsor the channel, I mean, we have advertising slots open. Just drop me a message. Next up is SMTPing. This is an email validation tool. The main thing that caught my attention with this tool was the fact that the email validation credits renewed. They allowed you to use them again and again every single month. In previous email validation tools, they just were one-time use. It was like buying your credits up front. After you use that number of credits, they were gone. So it wasn't really a lifetime deal. It was just a, a good deal on a one-time purchase. With SMTPing, you get that reoccurring credit. Now, the downside is it's pretty new product and there's not all of the features that you might expect to see if you're used to using bigger name email validation tools. In my video, I compared it to ClearOut, which actually used to be on AppSumo and is now a pretty established company. ClearOut's got some nice API connections. It just has definitely some more bells and whistles, nice, nicer ways to download your results. But in the end, if you can get very similar results with SMTPing at super low prices, because their prices are rock bottom, it definitely makes it something worth considering. If you don't know what email validation is or what I've been talking about for the last minute, definitely go check out my full length video because I go into great detail there. Should be very informative if this is a new subject matter for you. Again, links are down below in the description. I ended up giving SMTPing a score of 6.9. It's pretty good, but it's definitely lacking some high-end features that I hope they add in time because I got a full stack and you know I'm hoping that it ends up paying off over time. Everybody who's bought LTVs knows that feeling. All right, let's move along to unifier.ai. This is a content repurposing tool that allows you to start with say a YouTube video, a transcript, or even just maybe some poorly written notes and then change that content into a newsletter or some tweets or a blog post. You get the idea, I think there's over 30 different formats. So on the surface, this seems like a really cool idea. However, in practice, I definitely ran into some trouble. Now, first of all, I didn't feel like the amount of credits I was given per uh, lifetime deal was all that super generous. I think the low end was like 30 credits and one blog post ended up taking five of those credits. So you're looking at maybe like six posts per generation. Now I focused in my video on the blog post because they were by far the highest quality content that was able to get out of Unifier. So if you're going to use that tool, I would highly recommend using it pretty much only for generating blog posts. I think another AI tool like ChatGPT or Claude is probably gonna be better off for doing the short form stuff like tweets or uh, you know SEO descriptions, things like that. The main thing that Unifier is trying to pitch is that you don't need to know prompt engineering. And I think as the tools get better and better, that becomes less of an important part of using something like Claude or ChatGPT. 
I'm finding that I don't need to spend as much time on prompt engineering these days and just writing kind of what I wanted to do. And it seemed to pick up on my intentions fairly well. So relying on the fact that we'll write prompts for you probably is not the key to a long-term success. I ended up giving Unifier a probably generous 6.2 full length review showing maybe a few other problems that I ran to you as well. And you can also see the quality of those blog posts. That was actually pretty impressive. It was like 5,000 words with a single click. So I, I don't know, I'm, I was impressed with that and I would consider using the tool more frequently if I got more credits probably is the main thing there. And last but not least is salad transcription. This was perhaps one of the weirdest videos I've ever recorded because I went in expecting one product and ended up finding out I got a totally different product. So the idea here is that salad transcription does transcription, right? So you can upload a video or some audio and then it will output you know, a transcription, exactly what you think. It uses OpenAI's Whisper model, which is you know kind of the best around. I think everyone still agrees on that. But the thing is, it's based on an API. So what you really need to do is be a developer. You can connect Salad Transcription up to your application, and then you can generate transcriptions for your users. I am not a developer. I was looking for more of a front end user interface. They did have a little testing lab. I was able to eventually figure out how to get my MP3 recognized by and actually output a transcription. But even that transcription was output in JSON format. So it's definitely not end user friendly. I could use Claude to then strip out the actual JSON and just give me the words that were spoken. But you know, at this point, it's, it's not for me. It's not for the every person. Definitely developer focused. However, if you are a developer, check out this tool because I found the limits to be very generous. 100 hours of transcription for I think it was 39 bucks was the lowest code. I'll the editor check me on that down below. And you could scale that up infinitely. You could add as many codes as you want and get as infinite amount of hours so you can serve as many clients or customers as you need to. Now, due to the nature of salad transcription, me not being a developer, I didn't give this one a final score either. So kind of a weird week where I have two products I don't give scores to, uh, my meat just not working for me, and then salad transcription, obviously I'm not a developer, I don't have an application I can connect up to it. So I uh, didn't feel like it was justified. I didn't really stress test the API and I don't understand the flexibility of it. So I uh, didn't feel like it was necessary to score. All right, that is all of the tools I have reviewed this week. Again, definitely check out the full length ones if any of these tools sound interesting to you. Drop me in a comment if you wanna maybe suggest a tool for a future video. Any questions about existing AppSumo deals, I'm happy to look into them for you. My name is Dave Swift. If you want help with your website, you wanna work with me and my team, check out clientamp.com and I'll see you in the next video.